Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Pipe Report. Forgive the background noise. I have some machines running, but an article just came out. A judge rules that Trump's DACA phase-out is indeed legal. Decision doesn't stop the other court's blockade, however. And I think for the most part, everyone knew this would happen eventually. The two previous judges that ruled against Donald Trump's phase-out of DACA clearly have a political bias against him. I believe one was part of the Ninth Circuit District Court of Appeals. They have uh, 80%, or rather 8 out of 10 of their rulings are overturned by the Supreme Court. So they definitely have a political bias in their rulings. So it's not really that far-fetched to believe that when a judge sees something like DACA, something that Obama instituted with a stroke of a pen, something that goes against the Trump administration and goes against the GOP in Congress, it doesn't really, I think, surprise many people to know that they're going to automatically play their own, their own political bias card, for lack of a better phrase. And in doing so, they're going to usurp the Constitution because, for the most part, all major scholars from criminal law professors to just common constitutionalists know that Obama's actions creating DACA were indeed illegal. He superseded congressional authority by doing so. And this wasn't the first time he did this. Uh, we know his past statements, I don't need Congress, I have a phone and I have a pen. Now, when he said that, he was discussing health care, but he did the same thing also with the clean power plan, basically tried to give the EPA congressional authority, which is against the Constitution. So Obama, he was not really a believer in the Constitution. Everything he did, or rather a lot of what he did, he tried to supersede its rulings. He tried to be, basically be the dictator in chief. I think that is what they, um, that is what the slogans that's what people said in terms of slogans. but And it's funny when they try to compare Trump to Obama, calling Trump like a dictator, Trump a fascist. And it's like, well, if you actually compare them based on the way they work with Congress as opposed to doing things unilaterally, that is, doing things by themselves, Obama is far, far ahead of Trump in terms of authoritarian rule. So... Yeah, but here's the article. Short article. A federal judge ruled Monday that Trump's phase-out of the Obama-era DACA program is legal, adding heft to the administration's defense, but doing little to solve the ongoing court quagmire. The ruling does not overturn two other federal courts, who had previously blocked the phase-out, which was supposed to take effect Monday. But it does offer a needed boost as the DOJ appeals those other two rulings. Judge Roger Titus, a Bush appointee to the bench in Maryland, said the judges in California and New York, typical, who blocked the phase-out attempted to substitute their own judgments for that of the Homeland Security Department, crossing constitutional lines in order to strike at Mr. Trump's policies. And this is not the first time we've seen judges try to determine, or rather trying to substantiate their rulings by seeing this person was thinking this when he made that order. Example I can give is the whole temporary restriction on immigration into the country from certain specific countries. They basically said it was Trump's intention, although the, the order itself did not clarify this, it was Trump's hidden intention to not let any Muslims in the country, and therefore it is unconstitutional. They use that based on Trump's past rhetoric during the campaign and also based on rhetoric that Rudy Giuliani said during the campaign. R Rudy Giuliani, somebody who is not even a member of the Trump administration, the, some federal judges were using what Giuliani thought and saying that is what the intention of Trump's executive order was. So when you have that, when you have judges that do that, that try to base a ruling based on what they think the other person, what their hidden agenda is, rather than just reading what the order says, 
terms of executive orders, that is, then you have a real constitutional problem because a judge is supposed to look at law. And he's supposed to determine, based on past law, that's called precedent, on whether or not this new law is constitutional, on whether or not it actually falls into the normality in terms of law. And when they try to add certain externalities to their rulings, well, he, I, I mean, so the law doesn't say this, but I think his hidden agenda is actually this. So I'm going to say it's unconstitutional because although the law, although the order doesn't say anything about this, it's possible that deep down, deep down, this is what Trump wants or this is what Congress wants. And to this effect, that is not legal. I mean, it's that type of mentality that completely contradicts everything this country is founded upon. This country is a nation of laws. And when these activist judges in the federal appeals court system, when they try to impose their own personal biases against those they don't like in offices, and in turn make rulings that are just questionable at best, but to be honest, they're pretty much just targeting those who don't, they don't like, then we have a real problem. Then we have a real abuse of authority. That means that the judicial branch for the three branches of government, the judicial branch, the executive branch, and the legislative branch, we know that the, that the judicial branch is, super, is usurping their position. They're trying to become the dominant branch of the country. And that is against everything in the Constitution, and that is against everything that the founders believed in. So it's sad when we see these activist judges continuing this type of mentality, continuing this behavior that they know the hidden thoughts of someone so much so that they can guarantee that they can make a ruling based on fact that that person although didn't write this and down in the order that didn't make a law about this but he has these hidden thoughts and those hidden thoughts are enough to make a ruling against him that's a real real problem to have and that's what we're having in the country at the moment so let's move on though Judge Titus went even further, praising the Trump administration for the way it handled the situation with a six-month phase-out. This decision took control of all pell-mell situation and provided Congress, the branch of government charged with determining immigration policy, an opportunity to remedy it. Given the reasonable belief that DACA was unlawful, the decision to wind down DACA in an orderly manner was rational, the judge wrote. And I think the judge made it clear on the second sentence the branch of government charged with determining immigration policy. That is Congress. That is Congress. That is why Obama's action of DACA was unconstitutional, because he did it himself. Now, the president can determine who is allowed into the country based on national security. That falls into his purview. But in terms of immigration policy, that is Congress. So it's this... It's a sad world we live in when these these judges are becoming more and more less like judges and more like political activists. We really need to reverse that mentality. It's hard though. It's hard because judges basically have a lifetime a lifetime uh, uh, I can't think of the word a lifetime seating on the courts, a lifetime I can't, can't think of the word. That they're able to stay in office for the rest of their lives, basically. So, yeah. Things, things need to change, and this is a good first step. Maybe now another judge will rule it's legal, or maybe they'll take it actually to the, uh, take it to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court will rule in favor of Trump just because what Obama did was unconstitutional, and most people know that by now. Even, even those who aren't scholars know that's unconstitutional. So, and I'm done.